All right, let's take a look at uh, problem four here. Uh, so this is problem 1010 from chapter 10 in the text. So at 542 Kelvin and 21.7 bar, the system ethylene benzene is in vapor liquid equilibrium. Available data for the systems given in the table below. Filling out the fill out the missing information uh, on the table. So it's kind of like the the problem where the fax machine was broken, um, and we had to fill in some blanks. Okay. Uh, so let's start with um, <laughs> let's start with A and, and see what we have. Okay, so the first thing is we're told that our system is at vapor liquid coexistence. Okay, so our system's at vapor liquid coexistence. So let's see what sort of connections we can make here. Okay, so first thing that comes out to me is if I look at benzene, I see that I have phi vapor and F vapor, right? So I have the fugacity coefficient of benzene in the vapor phase and fugacity of um, benzene in the vapor phase. If I look up at ethyl benzene, I just have fugacity coefficient of the liquid uh, and fugacity of the vapor. Okay, so why this sticks out to me, why I have, this, uh, I have the same piece of information for um, uh, benzene, the, the, the same component for the same phase. Okay, so what stands out to me then is, well, if I have F2 vapor, Okay, that would be equivalent to a Y2 vapor phase composition times P. Okay, that's my fugacity of, you know, component I in an ideal gas mixture times, um, so if not phi I, phi 2, V. Okay, uh, so I know phi 2 V, uh, pressure is 21.7 bars, so I have pressure, and I have F2 V. So the only unknown is Y2. Okay, so I can solve for Y2. Y2 then would be F2V divided by uh, P times V2V. Okay, so as I take inventory, that gets me Y2. Okay, so I'm going to say check. Okay, and then if I just look above it for Y1, well, Y1 is just going to be 1 minus Y2. Okay, so check. I have Y as well. Okay, what else can I do? Okay, well, um, if I look here you know, at this column, okay, uh, so if I have a system at two phase coexistence, then the fugacity of each component in the two phases uh, is equal. Okay, so I would have the F1 liquid is just going to be equal to F1 vapor. Okay, and we're, we know F1 vapor, so that gives me F1 liquid. And then likewise, I know that F2 liquid would be equal to F2 vapor. Okay, I know F2 vapor. Bam, so I have this. All right, so where to next? Okay, so now looking uh, at the first um, uh, row, now that I have uh, the fugacity of component one in the liquid phase, now I see I have the fugacity coefficient of component one in the liquid phase. Okay. So just like how I started by just expanding out the fugacity of component two in the vapor, I can do the same thing for component one in the liquid. So the fugacity of component one in the liquid would be now it's you know the relevant mole fraction, so x1 times p. Okay. So now this could be a, a little uh, deceiving. Okay. Um, so xi times p is essentially um, partial pressure of uh, component i in the liquid phase uh, if we were to treat the liquid phase as is an ideal gas right so it's a liquid but we can still treat it as an ideal gas right an ideal gas is just this hypothetical system in which molecules don't interact and don't take up space so when i expand out uh, fugacity of component one right it'd be x1 times p um, times phi 1l okay so i know phi 1l uh, let's see so taking inventory i know f1l uh, I don't know x1, but I know p. Uh, it's given the problem statement, and I know phi1l. So I can solve for x1. x1 would be f1l divided by p times phi1l. All right. So I can get x1. Okay, let me check my boxes. Oop. So checking my boxes, right? I can get x1. Then if I want x2, x2 is just one minus x1. Cool. All right. So then I have uh, x2 and x1. Okay. What's next? Um, so what's missing is v2l and uh, v1v. Okay. 
Okay, and now we're prepared where we can um, get either of those, right? So let's say I wanted uh, V1, V first. Okay, so the trick is going to be, so if I scroll down, this is going to get cut off. I know V1, V, and I know Y1, right? The composition of my vapor phase. So if I were to expand out the fugacity of component one in the vapor, it would be Y1, P times V1, V, okay? And so since I need V1, V, right, just solving for V1, V then, it's just F1, V over Y1, P, okay? So I solve for V1, V, bam. Then if I want V1, L, or V2, L, key is I know uh, F2L and I know um, X2 and then P is given in the problem statement. Okay, so for completeness I can expand uh, the liquid phase fugacity of component 2 as being X2 times P times V2L and so I can solve for V2L. V2L would be F2L divided by X2 Bammo. Okay, got it. There's part A. I've got everything uh, filled in. Okay, great. So now let's look at uh, B. So B says calculate the entropy of a vapor mixture with Y1.3 at 600 Kelvin 12 bars. Okay, the reference state for each pure component is the ideal gas state at 600 Kelvin. Uh, and 12 bars. Okay, so the first thing that stands out to me is we're told we have a vapor mixture. Okay, um, so my temperature is greater than uh, the temperature of my system at two phase coexistence here, uh, and the pressure is less than uh, my pressure at two phase coexistence. So when they tell me I have a vapor mixture, I guess I'll just assume that it's a uh, single phase uh, vapor phase. Okay, and then um, we're given a reference date, and so you know point of note is, you know, if I, you know, interpret what everything we have, so we're told Y1 is 0.3, so Y2 would be 0.7, so I know the composition. So I know the temperature and pressure of that mixture, and then I'm also asked to adopt as a reference state uh, an ideal gas state, and notice that my ideal gas reference state is at the same temperature and pressure as my state of interest, okay? And then in terms of additional information for part, for part B, we're given the re residual entropy of the mixture at the same temperature and pressure, and we're given ideal gas heat capacities. All right, so what is a person to do? Well, the first thing that stands out to me is we're given residual entropy, okay? Okay, so if I take that as a starting point, okay, Okay. Why is residual entropy um, of use? Well, so if I'm given the residual entropy of my mixture, I know that the residual entropy is nothing more than the actual entropy um, of my mixture relative to that of an ideal gas. Okay, cool. So if I want S, the entropy of my mixture, that'd be equivalent to SIG, the um, entropy of uh, corresponding ideal gas mixture, plus SR, okay? where we know SR. Okay. So then it's just going to reduce to, can I calculate the ideal gas entropy of my mixture? Okay. All right, well, uh, what can I do with this? So thinking back to chapter 9, uh, we talked about property changes upon mixing, right? Uh, and we said, you know, you should remember uh, the expression for the um, entropy of mixing uh, of an ideal gas, right? Right. Okay. So, okay. So our goal is to get SIG, okay? So let me just write that as a note, right? So our goal is to, to get this quantity, okay? So thinking back to the last chapter and property changes upon mixing, okay? I remember the delta S of mixing, okay, of an ideal gas is equal to, okay? Now I can't always remember the sign, but I know I'm gonna have an R sum over I, YI log YI, okay? Now in terms of sign, log yi, so yi is always going to be less than um, or equal to 1, right? But 1 would be the pure component limit. So y will always be less than 1. So this term will always be negative. So delta s of mixing then is a negative r sum over i, yi, log yi. 
negative sign so that it makes sure that delta S of mixing is always positive. Okay, so this is the important part to remember. R, okay, R has the same units as S. Okay, and so that's where the, the R comes in. Okay, so that's delta S of mixing of an ideal gas is given by this expression. Okay, and formally, what is delta S of mixing? Well, it'd be the entropy of the mixture, in this case it's an ideal gas, relative to the molar average of the pure component um, entropies. So the pure component, the entropies of those two pure component systems that I mixed at the same uh, T and P. Okay, and you know again I, I remind you this is at the same T and P. So when I say delta S of mixing here, an ideal gas, that'd be at a given temperature, pressure, and composition. Okay, that's equal to so this would be my ideal gas entropy at the same temperature, pressure, and composition relative to that of the molar average, so minus sum over I, Yi, so this is molar average of the pure component molar entropies at the same T and P, right? The molar entropy of those two components I'm, I'm mixing together, okay? So solving for SIG, okay? So SIG then at TP and YI is equal to um, let's write this term first. And so for the case of a binary system, I have Y1, S1, ideal gas, okay, that'd be at the same uh, temperature and pressure, plus Y2, S2, ideal gas, at the same T and P, okay, uh, and then that'd be a, a plus delta S of mixing, and to be a minus R, okay, minus R, we're bringing that guy over to, to the left, y1 log y1 plus y2 log y2. All right, now if we go back to the problem statement, okay, I am interested in the entropy of a mixture at, you know, this temperature, that pressure, and this composition, so at 600 Kelvin, 12 bars, and um, uh, mole fraction of component 1 to 0.3 and we're told that the reference state for each pure component is the ideal gas state at 600 Kelvin and 12 bars. Okay, So I'm interested in the entropy at 600 Kelvin and 12 bars so these would be the pure component um, entropies at 600 Kelvin and 12 bars right and this is molar entropy of my ideal gas mixture pure component uh, molar entropies at the same temperature and pressure, 600 Kelvin and 12 bars, and we're told to take these to be our reference states, okay? Which means that those are essentially just zero. And so then what we'd be left with is that um, SIG, okay, at TP, um, you know, in this Y1 of, of 0.3, would be just equal to negative R, Y1 log Y1 plus y2 log y2, okay, where uh, y1 is 0.3 and so y2 is 0.7, okay, so I can calculate SIG, and once I have the molar entropy of my ideal gas mixture, okay, uh, we, we know the residual entropy, and so then we know the, uh, the entropy, or the actual entropy of my mixture, all right, cool.